Greetings, friends. It is said parting is such sweet sorrow. Today, it's just going to be just plain sweet. This is AJ the Autistic Pony. He is a burden on society. And this isn't just me talking. This screenshot here, which was provided by Fallen Wish, you see the same person that Lily defends from Horse News constantly, can't stand Pete. I just want to rub that in just a little bit more. I want to pour a little salt in the wound there. In fact, she offered her voice to mock Pete in one of these previous recordings. I want to admit something to you. Um, I'm in the Discord server, and while I love it, as, as it's a very comforting place, sometimes I get uncomfortable in it from one thing. Y you. Um, sometimes you come across too, too harsh, and it, it really makes me not want to be in the server anymore. I love and respect you so much. But I'm also terrified of you, and when you get the way you were today, I understand what you're doing and where you're coming from, and think you were in the right, but still, you scare me sometimes. Let's not get too sidetracked. Here is AJ acting like Keyframe's father passing was some sort of hot news. Now look, I understand diminished capacity. This is not a solitary, isolated incident. AJ spammed this post in various rooms. See you down below in the comment section if you'd like to vent on that if you were in any of those rooms. AJ is also the same person who tried to capitalize on the editor's previous breakup when he and the editor were friends. Notice a pattern on how friendships are lost with AJ and how he seems to still continue on trying to cling there where he's no longer wanted. If this was AJ actively trying to cause harm, and this is all just a bunch of fuck-ups, I'd hate to see what AJ would do if he's openly dislikes someone. Dear AJ, till now, in the back of my mind, I felt this little nagging voice, perhaps I'm being really impatient with you, because I've accumulated enough pull where I feel I don't have to put up with some of your shortcomings, which, according to Fallen Wish, includes sexual harassment, which doesn't include memeing off, nice shoes, let's fuck, so you're free to show up in the comments and tell me how this post is false and misleading. You're also free to go away. You are currently bothering my current girlfriend, and honestly, I find that far more bothersome than anything Vita has done considering your history. I can take a joke. Hell, I can take a cruel joke meant with bad intentions. What I don't want to take is someone who is a stumble bum who can't either or won't learn from his idiocy. My advice to people dealing with AJ? Block him. Pete, I said it before and I'll say it again. By all means, add this person to your Discord chat. Woman up or shut the fuck up. Somebody that Aguilar just got done saying equally disgusting things about and resumed saying equally disgusting things about immediately afterward. Now on to Rail Pony. Rail's buffoonery began here. Now look. I haven't talked about Rail Pony in forever. Hell, I remember when he pissed off Golden Fox a, a lifetime ago. And here he is again. I'm open-minded to this being an honest mistake, maybe. Rail Pony needed a Snickers bar that day. He didn't get enough sleep. Who knows? But after the initial fuck-up and Rail got kicked off of Twitter, whether that's valid or not, we'll leave that to another channel and someone else besides me. If you'd like to hear more about that, here's a video from Mr. Medica breaking that down. Link's down below. I encourage you to go check that out. Rail Pony made a video where he did the I'm sorry, but I don't see you while I'm getting dogpiled right now. Believe it or not, I didn't download that video. So congrats, Rail Pony. Nobody has your apology video. There were some critics from the members of the Bernie community who had to speak their mind about your apology video. Not an apology that focuses on you, or you coming up with excuses, or you being sad because you lost your media account. You own up to what you did, you apologize to Miss Keyframe legitimately, and with all the sympathy you can muster and move on. Because quite frankly, you don't deserve your YouTube account either. Not after your despicable comments. Your excuses, your narrow-minded, inconsiderate grasp to dignify your comments to make you look like the victim, you dishonor and disrespected my friend and her father, you own up to it and apologize and do not bother her at all and leave her 
alone, not drag on the drama. Bitch ass motherfucker. Now, I'm not saying I wouldn't have used this had the story ended here. The truth is, this story probably would have blown over in a week or two, especially with Rail taking his video down and only to put it back up on Vidme. Here put it back up on Vidme. Here is Ain Y responding to why Rail Ponies disabled his comments doodle tone style. I can't say Lily Pete style as Lily polices her comments and doesn't just simply shut them off. Dark Scythe, you better not mention my damper fetish because if you do, I'm going to report you for cyberbullying and disable comments. Besides, it's just gonna be a generic CC rant, so fuck. Ain Y followed Rail Pony from video to video demanding an explanation, and I'll be honest with you, this is entirely out of character, but I understand. Eventually, Rail took all the versions of the video down, last I checked, and here we are. The moral of the lesson class, if you don't know how to handle yourself, and someone just died, shut the fuck up. When Drake's dad died and Keyframe's dad passed away, I didn't know what to say. I was terrified, out of my mind I'd fuck up and say something inappropriate. I think part of handling things is to talk with your friends and test the waters and see if saying something seems cool. Asking yourself, would you want to hear this crap if your mom or dad died? You know, I wasn't all that involved or attached to this one, the whole rail pony drama. Here's my good friend Postscript, I, aka I know Hisenshi, aka Brony Crusaders, aka the man with too many non diplumes to his name. Let's have a good rail roast. Oh my god, what the fuck? Alright, you little prepubescent edgelord wannabe, what in the name of all chocolate kisses and peanut butter cups made you think it was a good idea to tell someone after their fucking father died simply good riddance? How about being a normal human being and simply saying my condolences or I'm sorry for your loss? Is that too much for you? Or do the concepts of being empathic towards your fellow humankind simply not register to your extremely limited mind? And what's worse, even after you posted your so-called <clears throat> apology video to Chrissy after half the goddamn fandom tore into your asshole like a sexually deprived hyena, all your fucking video was was you making a fucking excuse as to why you were right to make your little comment about how people should lay off of you, understand you, not fucking once did you actually fucking apologize to her, not once did you say I'm sorry, not once did you say honestly please forgive me for what I said because you were so goddamn dead set on seeing through to making yourself out to be the fallen martyr Jesus Christ himself as if nothing you had done was actually so fucking wrong. And so, once again, you duck your tail between your legs like a scared little bitch and ripped the video from your channel and all the nasty comments of people telling you the truth that you still need to apologize. You still needed to stop playing the damn victim card and holding on to that like it was the sinking Titanic's only remaining life raft. But no, you still couldn't do any of that. You have to make it all about you. You have to be the victim in all of this, even if it was your own dumbass call that made all of this to begin in the first place. Others think you can do what's right, that you'll become better. Those of us already know the truth. You can't. Kids like you won't change until you stop believing the entire goddamn world revolves around you. You think you're the only one suffering. You think everyone and everything owes you something. And in both cases, you will forever be wrong. There will always be far, far worse cases out there than you can ever imagine. So get the fuck over yourself. It would come as no surprise as that Lily, who wants to bust her mom's nose, supports an abusive dick like AJ. Wow, Lily, you really know how to pick a mountain to die on. It's almost like you don't talk to anyone, but we'll get back to you in time. So, this is YouTube, dude. He's done two videos on me. Let, let's grab a clip. Turn off that pesky ad block. Skipping the intro. Skipping the intro? I die a little inside every time I hear that. Hey, boy, it's YouTube, dude. Doodle, I can't hold back anymore. There's something I need to tell you. Fuck, what is it, you limp puke? Is it enough I let you have your channel back? Doodle, what I mean to say is, would you like to do it? That's gross. How would that even work? Well, I can't have sex, but I can give you a stick job. That, <laughs> fuck. Yes, it is very unpleasant. Take me, Doodle. I am wearing that woman down. Oh yes, she will be mine.
Well, YouTube dude, you showed me. You heard them. My enemies want you to turn off that pesky ad block. As for the fact that YouTube dude clearly wants to dabble a doodle, hey man, I ship it, YouTube tones is a thing. Now in response to Pete's post, which I guess we should make this its own section, we could come to call it Terra Time. Or maybe Pete's posts. Now a while ago, Brittany, that's from Pete's old ancient show, our VI? Yeah, RVI. Brittany offered me some screenshots of a private conversation between Pete and herself and a person named Tara. I passed on those because posting those would be against YouTube's terms of service, aka the TOS. Besides the fact that the screenshots I saw seemed easy enough to edit. It's not that I don't trust Brittany, it's that I don't trust anyone. Remember that line, kids, that will keep you out of a lot of trouble. Let's do a quick response here. Voice of Reasons slash Captor, girlfriend, she threw a historic meltdown when I made this video saying the Voice of Reason was wrong and developed into outright bigotry over it. She presumably apologized, but seeing through something contradicting her again, she went right back into throwing another histrionic tantrum. It's alarming that someone is that easily set into fits of rage over something as trivial as you're wrong. But I guess that's the world we live in. I suggest someone check on Voice Reason, because if this is how poorly his girlfriend behaves, I suspect he might not be in the safest of places. Oh, Jerry. The funny thing here is that Sister doesn't realize that Lizzie disagrees with you quite a bit. It doesn't fit the Riff's narrative, so they ignore me constantly. Lizzie disagrees with me on record on the Clop Drawer podcast. I would like an example. They make shit up. Again, an example would be nice. That's what they're doing. It's what Aguilar and that those two charity cases pretending to be former friends have been doing. It's what they always do. Need to believe that I'm some kind of evil monster because they've been making up so much deranged bullshit over the years that they can't risk anything breaking that delusion. Once again, Jerry, if I were making bullshit up, I would be talking about the Brony notion constantly. I would be making up, there would be videos, videos and videos long about what a horrible person the Bernie Notion is. I hate him. He's so boring and dry, but I don't have to make anything up because the things wrong with you, Jerry, are better than my wildest dreams and craziest imagination. Continuing on, that's the core of this, FNGR, Sega Sister, those weirdos at the e bore E4B. I don't even know what that is, Jerry. They're all delusional. Again, I am not on... I don't even know Sega Sister's first name. Or last name. I know nothing about her. We didn't chill and hang out at BernieCon. They're obsessed with me. Pathologically obsessed. I don't know why. It's fucking pathetic. They all need to go see some fucking doctors. Well, you mean like the one that you slapped the shit out of according to uh, Terra there? Sega Sister is not currently in the Secret Rift or Limbo. Until whatever this was, Sega and I had parted ways, and last, and we were on less than amicable terms. So, Lily, thank you. Thanks to you, Sega is now talking to me again. I basically sent her a request and said, hey, I'm being blamed for something. I thought I'd say hi. Now, I'm not going to speculate on Voice of Reason's relationship other than they looked sweet and lovable and endearing at BronyCon. Not to mention Voice of Reason was a great deal bigger than Sega. Except in the... Damn it, Jeff, we're not going to talk about Sega's bosom. Why is that? Is it a massive conversation? Jeff, my girlfriend watches this show. So we're going to be here all day if we talk about it, eh? <laughs> Anywho, this is Terra's Tumblr. A long time ago, Lily Pete, then Jerry Pete, had a show called RVI. Some of the people on that show included Bombastic Blake and Brittany. We talked to them the last couple of shows. Ah, uh, the last couple of How Not to Bronies. They're swell people. Truth be told, if this is how Anon acts behind the veil... I've grossly misjudged Anon. I'd take that evaluation with a lot of salt. But one of the other people from RVI was called Tara. Pete insisted Tara when asked about her that she has been sent off to jail for sexual misconduct of some sort in nature. Where, as a lot of people insist Tara never existed, and perhaps it was Pete goofing on people. The Terra Tumblr is a good 18 pages long. I have sorted out about five to six posts of interest. Not to say that there isn't more. I'm sure if you're super curious, you'll find something that you'll like with a link down below to Terra's Tumblr. FNGR, you fool. If this is Pete, that that blog will disappear now. Silly, Jeff. That's why I opened up OBS and op 
or open broadcast and recorded all 18 pages. This thing is four years old, and I would assume some of Jerry's old friends, quotation marks, you know the ones, already did this. I may include a link to my Minds account or BitChute, plugged up Minds and BitChute, where I might show this whole Tumblr. Go sign up there. So, here's the choice ones. There is a mistaken death scene, something about Jerry beating up a doctor for a misdiagnosis. You gotta love a Canadian healthcare. Mwah. Something about goosing someone at the hospital while being under medical care. A brief explanation of Tara and Jerry sharing the same computer, which includes the same IP, I believe. Tara? Not liking Jerry's parents, this seems to be... This isn't a new thing, especially when you consider his current woman, but enough of that. And for the sake of taste and courtesy, that's all I feel like showing. So is it the same person? Maybe, maybe not. But you know what, guys? You're free to ask Jerry about Tara. And after you peek at that blog spot, oh, you'll find some things. So Pete... You were saying something about this not being an arms race. I differ to beg. So, back to Pete's posts. Page 1. Are you planning to respond to all the accusations in Aguilar's last video? None of them are credible. It's all done through hearsay. He has no proof of any of these claims, just as he never does. Which is why he's developed into sniping offhand remarks from Tumblr posts, trying to pretend I'm melodramatic every time he's mentioned. Gasp! Sorry. Being spoken about negatively pisses him off. Again, there's a Medicare video out there with like, what is it, over 100,000 views? Okay, have at it. He disguises his rage as mirth. Well, no, I, I do get mad, Jerry. That, that KP video pissed the fucking shit out of me. The bug spray video? Much better. Way more interesting. The fact is, nobody's going to believe his garbage except for the people who already want reasons to hate the person he's stalking. And he pulls in only people who confirm his bias. Hey Jerry, I don't go around talking about women sexually manipulating me. Oh god, you are such a beta male. You are such a fake and a fraud and such a complete beta fucking male that you would be like, oh, a woman is sexually manipulating me. Who the fuck would goddamn cop to that, even if it were true? You are such a pathetic fucking loser. See? Here's the problem, Pete. I've prepared to say maybe there was or maybe there wasn't a Terra. You're free to come forward and clarify that misunderstanding. Carrying on. Aguilar deals in rumors, mongering, and smear campaigns. It's the only way he works. Well, actually, I have analysis daily. I have other things. The podcast, uh, I do go on other people's shows. That's not the only thing I do. I did a 23-minute video detailing the root cause of his behavior and the behavior of similar people. But you don't talk to any of those people, Jerry. You don't interact with any of those people. You have no experience. You're talking out your ass. Pretty good guesses, I'll give you that. You, you do hit some of them, and that's something that a lot of my enemies hit on. You could talk to any of them who even said, yeah, no, you're guessing at most of this shit. The sheer level of toxicity he engages in and his response was to attempt to discredit me, not by refuting everything in the video. Well, not everything is wrong in the video, Jerry. Not everything. But by bringing in the one or two people. Well, no, no, once again, you could look it up. Brittany sought me out. I'll say it again. Any one of Jerry Pete's fans, down below, type one if you heard me say... Jerry was right about, well, we'll say, let's, let's be lazy and say 50%. There's a good number of things that I'm a dick about. How many, ch how often does Jerry Pete say that he's wrong? Here's a better one. You know what? Let's, let's, let's do this. How much of the Josh Scorcher fucking goddamn friendship does Jerry admit to fucking up? No, and I'm, I'm very sympathetic on that one, but you have to realize that that had to be some of your fucking fault, Jerry, for fuck's sake. For clarification... Brittany, and I'm going to edit out and not include the last name here. Nice doxing, Jerry. Nice doxing. Well done. Exploited my insecurities about my sexuality and gender identity for easy cyber sex. Jerry, get the fuck over yourself. You are a disgusting, pasty-faced white motherfucker. Brittany does not want to sleep with you. I, I want, I want, seriously, Jerry's fans, I want you to take a look at Jerry. And I want you to ask yourself if you really think that this girl wanted to have sex with him. Bullshit. 
I need you to fucking put all that bullshit aside that Jerry is doing as a trans trender, not a real transgender person, not as someone who's actually getting the medical conditioning or any of the treatments to go through all that shit. There are people like that. Uh, Dove Phillips is going through that transition right now and going through great lengths to try and become the person that she wants to be is probably been one of the laziest, disgusting fucks on this whole matter and is using, abusing a trend, a movement to get easy clicks and cheap views. Imagine if the reverse happened where Aguilar claims the sky is blue and I responded with, yeah, well, you touch children. Prove me wrong or you're guilty. That's how things work. Well, no, Jerry, I've never accused you of being a pedophile. Oh, even if all this bullshit got blank, again, this is Jerry doxing Brittany by putting her last name up, to spew about me was true, that doesn't change the fact that I'm right about him and his behavior. Again, I'd be glad to sit down and talk about where I fucked up. Quite a bit. I've hit more bullseyes than misses with you, Jerry. A lot. And his responses to those accusations was to engage in the same behavior I just got done deconstructing. I put Blake and Brittany at the end of the videos because I didn't know how in demand their presence would be. You focused on the podcast at the end of both videos, which again, Brittany offered. I did ask Blake just to see where the rabbit hole went at that point. Do I think that you're a pedophile? Well, less than Stephen King, and he's running around outside of jail. Anyone in the audience is free to look up Stephen King's at the book on YouTube, and you should be able to find out what I'm talking about. I don't want to cover that at length here. But I don't recall making that accusation, Pete. I joked about you making cringy fanfiction, and fanfiction by definition is cringy. No one's singling you out. Oh sure, his, his sycophants will claim he admits his flaws, so he's better than you. That actually works the other way. No matter how bad you think I am, he's worse because he knows what he does is dishonest, spiteful, and evil. And he's doing it anyways. I'm going to slash out the dishonest part. You are in a special place though, Jerry, if you think what you're doing isn't spiteful. I know you're not that dumb. Admitting your flaws and not correcting them makes the very worst. Well, hi, Jerry. Nice to meet you. Me too. Aguilar thinks admitting his flaws is a get-out-of-jail-free card. It, it is, Jerry. I've been getting away with it quite handsomely, and no one seems to give a shit. Because when I do that, I have to kind of get along with people, and I have to talk with people, and I have to make sure that those people are at least semi-happy with what I'm doing, as opposed to you sitting off there in Duckburg and judging everybody, and going, I've got it all figured out! Feminism! Free patriarchy! Moving on. That may work for Lightning Bliss. At least until she's big enough to cross that road by herself. Ah, you know, I, I, I don't ever see her crossing that road. But it doesn't work in reality. There's another reason why she'll never cross that road. She gets advice and talks to people who are intelligent and smart and people who are cued in. I've, I've talked to who, or I found out who Josh talked to for those sort of matters. And <laughs> Bliss gets better consultation than Josh. Infinitely better. Oh my god, she's never going to fuck up as bad as he did. The only people who agree with that sentiment are people who want to get away with the evil shit that they do. Jerry, you don't believe in religion. You don't believe in morality. You don't believe in gods, devils. You are that pretentious shit that fucking the, the Brian the dog thing that you always make fun of. Where the fuck do you get off on saying evil about anything? You don't believe in a greater good. You believe that you're the center of your own fucking universe. You don't believe in evil. Shut the fuck up. When you say evil, you're probably saying, well, things that make me uncomfortable. The kicker is Aguilar knows he's lying. We're long past the point of whether or not he's trolling. You said originally, Jerry, on Tumblr, he needs to step up his effing game. I stepped up my effing game and then you got pissed off because you're made out of glass. It's not about being irritant or about being a detractor. It's about the fact that I'm the only one bothered to challenge his behavior in an environment where he's been previously allowed to run around around abusing everyone he's pleased and nobody stopped him. Yes, Jerry, you're the only person who's ever stood up to me. I do believe Mr. Medica would have something to say about that, or Dark Scythe, or Dylan Thomas, or YouTube Guy. But then again, I don't blame you for not clicking on that one. You are not special, Jerry. The funny thing is, about this post until you called me a liar, I could safely say you were on the money, except for copying to who and what I am working for me. This all has worked, Jerry. I've been very effective at exposing his bullying. How? How have you been effective? What have I lost? His extortion. By all means, I, I'd, I'd like to see those Canadian Mounties or some real police come to my door. Um, I'd like to see a actual example. 
a legal example, since you were throwing around and saying that I'm extorting, his abuse and he wants me to be quiet. He's desperately banking on embarrassing stories to shut me up. <laughs> That's bullcrap. That's going to keep you talking. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you'll make another response after the terror thing. He flat out admitted on Twitter that the reason he brought on to lie about me was because he thinks that high tier patrons will be motivated to cancel their pledges. Um, Jerry, I don't know how to tell you this. That's like saying that all those news outlets that went after PewDiePie were extorting him, which is bullshit. You live in a special fantasy gaga land. It's called Tumblr. Unfortunately, my highest tier patrons are least likely to abandon ship. If they were dumb enough to be swayed, well, Jerry, that would imply that I wouldn't have enough money to be one of those people. Ooh, you didn't think about that. Oh, they should have left when Josh tried the same shit last year. Honey, me and Josh have nothing in common. Absolutely nothing. Get that out of your head. And he at least had two neo-Nazis websites doing all the cherry picking for him. I'm going to guess he means Kiwi Farms and 8chan. And as funny as that would be, I don't really have any proof that fucking goddamn that they're neo-Nazi. I mean, what, because they might throw around a meme or two? I guess, I, I don't know, Jerry, is, is 4chan neo-Nazi too? Do, do you know what a joke is? Are you that much of a humorless cuck? Shout out, shout out to not a poker chip at uh, Napsy. You're one of those obnoxious social justice warriors that thinks everything that, that's a joke or funny or makes fun of liberal media is a Nazi. Everybody is wrong but you, Jerry. We understand. The only people who will buy this kind of bullshit so easily are people who are already motivated to do so. I, I just thought of Osaka Jack. There you go. You and him would be bestest bros. He is always preaching to the choir in... An otherwise empty church. I get new people all the time, Jerry. And every argument against him is always responded, not with refutations, but with excuses. I have a fair amount of my people who fucking goddamn sway against me. The difference is, is you have people who will argue like video games about you. My philosophy is very a great deal from fucking goddamn most of my friends. What, like maybe Brawny is like the only Catholic I hang out with, and even he's kind of like wishy-washy on it and has his own made-up thing? There's a word for that, by the way. Here you go, I'll, I'll, I'll say this. What Brawny practices is heresy. Unless you follow the church to the letter of the law. That's what I believe in. I, I am one of those dipshits who follow the, the guy with the goofy hat off in Rome. And I'm probably the only one I know in my circles who do. He loves accusing me of living in an echo chamber. That is an interesting narrative of extortion. What I said was your fans have talked to me more about Brittany after her interview. Here's a fun one, Jerry. I wonder if I lied and you threw out a bunch of innocent people because you got paranoid. Think about it, Chuckles. It takes absolutely no effort to say I have tons and tons of spies in your room, Jerry. Because it's in a perfect excuse. And whenever someone calls him on his behavior, his go-to response is no you. The number of times that he responds to criticism with the some look in the mirror or hypocrite much is staggering. And his sycophant audience will do the same. Who the fuck have you talked to from my audience? Foxwell isn't one of my people. Yeah. Any attempt to respond to any of his accusations will be met with putting his fingers in his ears and going la la la. I've had your people come in my chat, and I still do. I offer it on a regular basis. H how do you explain who talked to Misanthropony, Lily? Is Misanthropony currently in your Discord? He's not. Oh, well explain that one, because that's why he does. He thinks paying artists to draw me looking weird with a five o'clock shadow counts as a rebuttal. No, I did that because you had your girlfriend false flag me. I did that because I know that Lizzie has no backbone of her own. That's right, Lizzie. I know you're a weak, limp-wristed wimp that does whatever Lily tells you to do. And if he slaps you on the butt and says, go make me breakfast, you snap up and go do it. Paying people to read off my Tumblr posts in a screechy voice. I paid Event Horizon to read your posts off because he was dragging ass. Kitty read your shit because she does the voice of Molestia and hates you in Pinky Posh. Up and down, backwards and forwards. She utterly despises your ass. Then himself is a smug, self-satisfied tone, counts as a rebuttal. And his hate boner stroking audience eats this shit up, but it doesn't extend beyond that. The most Aguilar can actually do is annoy me. Now he thinks that's some kind of grand victory, but day-to-day -day life is filled with annoyances, and there will always be a pathetic things about hate mongers. 
that they think achieving the world's simplest tasks in some kind of way an accomplishment. My computer annoys me. It's not even trying to. Hey, Lily, I guarantee you I have more racial diversity. I have more people in my chat from the LGBT community. I challenge you to do this. We'll go up and down. I have a more diversified chat than you do with more interesting, open-minded content creators. And you have a bunch of whimpering, simpering dorks. Your chat has more in common with Richard... What's that guy's name? Spencer? The, the LARPer. The pretend Nazi that probably got shoved into lockers over and over again that's trying so desperately hard. People, please like me. You have a bunch of nerdy, cringy dorks and it bothers you. Oh, why can't I have the content creators? Why can't I have the good people? You don't. You have shit. There is nobody in your group of people that can match any of the artists that I have. Any of the voice actors I have. My friends are better than your customers any day of the week, twice on Sunday. Dear Jerry, I have been in your room and there's nothing worth screen capping. Hell, we had Jeff in your room for a whole month and it didn't bear any fruit. I don't know what these super spies were going to get. Gonna tell you right now, you did punish some innocent people. Won't say which ones. Some of them, all of them. Who can say? Dear Jerry, I do not talk like a valley girl. Hypocrite much? You know what hurts? Copy paste trolls who straight out of a folder. It's just painful. And that you're trying to cookie cut me into something maybe you've dealt with in the past. <sighs> tisk tisk. I defend you in my room. I've openly argued with Barney Buck on your validity. I mean, well, not so much recently. Can't imagine why. As for annoying you, I routinely said, before we get going, I would like to address this comment Pristine left on Analysis Daily. I just worry that the only reason why FMF, that's Fat Man Falling, won is because they wanted to see him beat the big guys. Like, in all honesty, how many of these guys who voted for him actually are subbed to him? Now, I am subbed to Fat Man Falling, and his editing is good, and I like his content at times. But I'll be honest and say I'm still on the fence with his logic because I feel he complains too much at times. I tend to prefer reviews that are fun to watch, needless to say, though congrats to FMF. Again, we had a big tournament, Lightning Bliss 1, and that big tournament that had such names as I Love Kim Possible a lot, Josh Scorcher, The Brony Notion, Silver Quill, Manga Common, Ty and Deka, so forth and so on. Alongside that tournament, we had a smaller tournament where Fat Man Falling beat Tricky Fox by a very narrow margin. If you would like to complain, you should direct those at the editor, who voted two hours too late, as well as someone else, and who knows, things might have swung differently. Then again, I might have had to recount it yet again. As for analysis being fun to watch, if this channel were called Laugh Track Daily, DWK would be the reigning, defending, undisputed champion. Analysis, at least in part, is about deconstruction. That's not all of it, and deconstruction isn't necessarily negative. It's simply the why, where, who, etc., etc., of why what something is the way that it is. If you're not happy entirely with the winner of this tournament, get involved more in the next one. I'm not always 100% thrilled with how these things go. I assure you, if I had my way, Manga Common would have won one of these by now. I think Gray Silvermane is a better analyst than Deckard Spade, despite Gray taking me apart in the past when I tried to suggest that Big Mac was transsexual. But that's neither here nor there. People are allowed to vote the way they want to. Fat Man lost to Deckard Spade in the past, and I think it was the tournament where Golden Fox winded up becoming the champion. I'm glad that there's a flux of people's opinions and change, that the audience change as well, which means critics and fans aren't all that different. 